Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Thomas, welcome. Uh, as I look at your record, it continues a pattern of the Biden administration of nominating individuals to the bench who have long careers as activists. Throughout the course of this hearing, you have explained some of your prior positions as simply representing a client. But when I look at your career, I don't see that. I see that you are passionately committed to a particular vision of the law. Uh, it has ranged from filing briefs in litigation in the state of Texas, defending race-based discrimination in university admissions, to most consistently uh, transgender activism and I would submit extremism. And this hasn't been one client you had in one case. This has rather been a consistent pattern that extended when you were a lawyer for the state of California, that extended when you were a lawyer for the US Department of Justice, that extended when you were a lawyer for the state of New York. In three different jurisdictions, you have been involved in litigation on the extremes of transgender issues. And in particular, you've carved out an expertise for yourself using litigation to force institutions to allow biological males to use restroom facilities and locker facilities that are also used by girls, young girls, that are used by women. And this has been a pattern. When you were a lawyer for the state of California, you, you filed a lawsuit against Crunch Fitness, a gym for not moving quickly enough to allow a biological male to use the women's locker room. When you were a lawyer for the state of New York, you filed briefs against the state of Texas, against the state of North Carolina, again, advocating for biological males to use girls and women's restrooms. And you know, the thing I find troubling about these arguments is it seems the women and girls never have any rights. That the girls that would like to shower next to someone who is not a biological male, who would like some privacy, their rights never seem to matter. And, and your pattern, it's not a single case. It is across three jurisdictions over and over again. In the Texas case, the brief you filed said, there, quote, there is no data or tangible evidence in support of the claim that allowing people to use bathrooms corresponding with their gender identity will lead to increased violence or crime in restrooms. Do you stand by that statement? Thank you for the question, Senator Cruz. Uh, so uh, again, as an advocate, you advocate for the positions of your, of your client. I, I haven't been an advocate for three years. I've been a judge. And when three I- Three years is not very long. And my question is simple. Do you stand by that statement? Uh, Senator Cruz, I, I, it would not be appropriate or consistent with my ethical duties to my former clients to comment on my personal views about any case that I, that I worked on. What my duty was, was to advocate zealously for my clients, I have set aside the advocacy role and I now occupy a judicial role where what but you're- Judge, your by brief also contended, quote, in states where anti-discrimination protections are already the law, the predicted safety harm has never materialized. You made a bold, aggressive, factual statement, by the way, in North Carolina, you said safety concerns were, quote, unfounded. You were an aggressive advocate, an activist advocate. And I believe the statements that you represented to, to, to the court, and those are statements that you're making as an officer of the court, I believe they were false, and they are extreme. You've heard, you testified to this committee that, that, that you were not aware of what happened in Land Loudoun County until this morning. I find that remarkable for someone who has spent years as one of the leading activists for allowing transgender biological men 
to use girls' restrooms and women's restrooms, and Loudoun County Scott Smith, who's the parent of a 14-year-old girl, alleged the Loudoun County School Board covered up the sexual assault by a gender-fluid individual against his ninth grade daughter who entered the girl's bathroom in a skirt, and this individual was charged with two counts of forcible sodomy, one count of anal sodomy, and one count of forcible fellatio. The school district covered it up. They released this sexual predator, and the predator committed sexual assault again, twice. Why did you represent to the court that concerns about violent sexual predators committing violent crimes against young girls are unfounded and, and, and speculative? Why did you represent that to the court? Thank you for the question. I advocated on behalf of my clients based upon the data that we had at the time, and I zealously, zealously did so in those cases and in every other case that I handled. W were you right? Uh, Senator Cruz, it would not be appropriate for me to comment on the merits of my, any personal views regarding litigation that I handled on behalf of my clients. Well, these what little girls who Senator were sexually Cruz, assaulted let, let her ha respond have, will have a very different, Thomas different Thomas assessment. Senator Cruz, these little girls Thomas who were respond. assaulted, thank you for your time views, but I'm... Your, your past time, let's afford Ms. Thomas she, an opportunity she is, to respond She is perfectly question. welcome to respond, but thank as you. I said, the little girls who were raped Thomas. in Loudoun County would have a very different assessment of whether this threat and danger is speculative or not, and you're more than welcome to respond. Thank you. Uh, I will just conclude by saying again that I understand the difference between being an advocate and being a judge. I am a judge now, and what I'm guided by is the record before me and the law, and that is, that is what I do now, and it's what I'll continue to do if confirmed. Thank you.